In this presentation, we will set up a new partnership, setting up the new capital accounts for partnership investments. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. So we're going to have the information up here on the left. We're going to enter this data into our trial balance. Note that the trial balance has nothing in it at this point in time. We're going to be starting the new partnership and uh, putting the capital investments, typically the first step to putting the journal entries at least together for a partnership. So what usually what happens when we first start the partnership is that the agreement amongst the partners as to what will be contributed to the partnership. Note that the partnership will typically need some kind of capital investment in order to first start the partnership. The goal then being to generate revenue in the partnership to then allocate to those partners. So we're going to have a partnership of three partners, which would be C, K, and M here. And this is going to be their contribution. C contributes solely cash, which will be the easiest type of thing to do and the best thing to do if possible, because then we can contribute the cash into the partnership and then make any kind of investments from the partnership. That's typically better to do. In other words, probably not as efficient to say buy the equipment um, if you don't have it already and then put that equipment into the partnership it's probably best to put the money into the partnership make the purchase from the partnership if possible uh, the, the second individual x uh, k here puts in cash and uh, has an accounts payable that is going to be incurred by the business and this could happen because it could be the fact that one of the partners may already be in business in some way. So the, the partner may have uh, accounts payable and as they go into the business, they may allocate that to the business, the business then assuming part of the liability. Uh, so it is, it is possible for the business to assume a liability. That happens also as well as if we put like equipment or building into the, into the partnership, which has some kind of financing related to it, a loan related to it, then the partnership would assume the loan as well. And then M's contribution is going to be equipment to the partnership. So it's also possible for us to put in something that is non-cash into the equipment. And, and so M's going to put in the 15000 of equipment. So let's go through these and we'll record these journal entries as we go into the partnership. So first is going to be cash. So we're going to say that cash uh, is going to increase by 10000 And then we're going to increase the capital account by 10000 so that's going to be a debit to cash. Cash started at zero. It's going to go up by 10,000 to 10,000. Then we have the capital account. So the capital account here starting at zero. It's going to go up by 10,000 to 10,000. So we're left with then, of course, the uh, partnership having cash of 10,000 and owing all of it to the capital account to C, the owner. Note what didn't happen is nothing happened to net income. So no revenue went up, no expenses went up, no effect on net income here. Also note that we have the profit sharing agreement of uh, 3 to 1, which you can see for C, if we, if we add those up, we've got 3 plus 2 plus 1 is 6. And the first person is 3 over 6. So that would be 50%. That uh, has nothing to do with necessarily the amount invested. It could be possible that we use the amount invested to then discuss what the profit sharing will be, but they don't necessarily need to be linked. So when we talk about what the profit sharing will be, when we get revenue, how are we going to split that revenue up? That negotiation could be totally different from uh, the negotiation for the original investments into the partnership. And so uh, these, these investments aren't necessarily equal into the partnership and they are not um they are not in accordance with necessarily the profit sharing agreement they are whatever the partners agree to put in place and you might ask well why aren't they equal why don't you know why would a partner agree you know for one partner to put in less money in this case and he's getting a higher profit sharing why would that be and there's a there's a lot of different reasons why that could be i mean it could be that c is going to uh put a lot more time into the partnership. Maybe they're the principal person that had the principal idea of, of the partnership. Maybe they're the ones that, um, you know, are going to, going to execute that idea and be the major person, you know, that, that's moving forward. Therefore, 
uh, they may they may put in less and still be allocated a significant portion of, of the profit sharing. So uh, that's going to be the first individual. Then the second individual we're saying puts in uh, the accounts payable. So we're going to say we debit cash for the 14000 And then we're going to credit the accounts payable. We're going to put the accounts payable on uh, the books to the partnership. So the partnership is now assuming the accounts payable. And then the difference, the 14000 minus the 2000 is 12000 That's what the capital accounts will increase by. So the capital account goes up by that 12000 So if we post this out then, we've got the cash at 10000 It's going up by that 14000 to 24000 Then we've got the accounts payable at zero. It's going up by 2000 to 2000 And the capital account at uh, zero going up by 12,000 to 12,000. So if we see all of our accounts here, we've got we've got uh, the cash now minus the liabilities is the 22,000 owed to C and K 10,000 and 12,000 respectively. And uh, so it's 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 interesting to think about this uh, the liability here as well. Again, you might have well where did we get the liability? It's it was agreed upon by the partnership. So how would that happen? It could be that this individual was already doing business possibly and in uh, in starting their business here with the partnership, transferring that payable uh, to the partnership. What does that do? Well, before they transferred it, K themselves, that partner, was solely responsible for paying back that 2000 of debt. Now the partnership is responsible and therefore the three of them have responsibility for paying off that debt so so really it, it kind of deludes the amount of debt that's owed by one individual you have the joint agency we have the three individuals now kind of on the line to pay off that two thousand um, dollars so that's kind of the and, and so that affects of course you know the capital account contribution uh, would typically go down and so that's why we got the fourteen thousand decreasing by the 2000 for that partner and then finally we've got m's capital account so m's going to put equipment in no cash just equipment and so the equipment is on the books for zero and we're going to put it on there for 15,000, debiting it 15,000. equipment's an asset account we're going to increase it by doing the same thing to it and then we'll credit the uh capital account by 15,000. so if we post this out then the equipment's going to go from zero uh, up by this 15,000 to 15,000, the capital account here is going to go from zero up uh, by 15,000 to 15,000. And then if we see all of this, we have our accounts here. Now, the equipment uh, is another one that's a little inter it's, it's interesting to think about because how are we going to get to this $15,000 number? We gave it to you in this problem, of course, but uh, in, in practice, it's really a number that's going to be agreed upon by the partners, meaning the equipment could have been something that this individual purchased a long time ago, and so we can't really use the cost of it. They may have depreciated it and uh, been recording depreciation and then have a book value of it, but we're not going to take their book value of it necessarily, meaning we're not going to put it on the books for you know equipment less accumulated depreciation, which had been you know taken by the prior individual of m here what we're going to do is agree on what price the partnership wants to put it on the books for and put it on the books as if they kind of bought the used piece of equipment at that point in time and that's similar to a market transaction so note we don't know what the price is of it we can guess we can get the kelly blue book and whatnot and do the depreciation but we don't know what it is unless we actually sold it because it's a pretty unique type of thing it's equipment uh, that's older equipment you know we don't know how much it'll sell for until we actually sell it so therefore um, when we put it in the partnership we're, we are doing some type of negotiation a fair market a free market type of transaction that being us negotiating what the equipment goes on the books for meaning the other two partners are concerned about what it goes on the books for because uh, you know, if it, it affects how much their capital account will be, M's capital account in relation to the other two. So there is some kind of negotiation here when we put the equipment on the books. What M and the others agree upon is what we'll put it on the books for. Of, of course, M would probably want to put it on the books at a higher amount and therefore have a higher capital account as they put it on the books. 
the other two may be negotiating for a lower amount so that their capital accounts are, are relatively uh, you know higher in perspective so but in any case there's, there's a bit of a negotiation process we put it on the books for whatever is agreed upon so at the end of the day now we've got uh, the cash and the equipment for the assets we've got the accumulated depreciation if we take the assets minus the liabilities that should and will equal what is in the capital accounts the capital accounts represent the net assets what is owed to the owner from the net assets and it's broken out by owner by c k and m uh, we we really have kind of a post-closing type trial balance looking like here we haven't closed anything clearly it's it's the first opening trial balance but in that it's similar to a post closing in that there's no revenue and expense accounts there are no temporary accounts there's no draws accounts no time has passed and therefore we only have balance sheet accounts we don't have any performance numbers in, in other words because time hasn't passed we haven't been able to perform and so we just have the balance sheet numbers and we just show the assets the liabilities assets minus liabilities representing the capital accounts also remember those capital accounts don't reflect necessarily the profit sharing once we have profit sharing once we have net income it will be allocated in accordance with the profit sharing agreement for more accounting information and accounting courses visit our website at accountinginstruction.info